Are you tired of creating characters the old way and leveling them up with the same old beats? Tasha's Cauldron of Everything took a step in the right direction with their custom origins, custom lineage system, optional bonus feats whenever you level up, and actual feats in the book too, but I'm gonna run with it. This is volume one of my DC homebrew cookbook of everything that I've been inspired from, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. In this video, we're going over custom origins and custom lineages and the difference between them. We're gonna take optional bonus class features and actually talk about what they are and how they work and clear up some misconceptions and talk about feats in general and then, like I said, I'm going to take all of that and run with it and combine all of them into one system to rule them all. It is the biggest homebrew system that I've been working on for over two years now, and it's finally ready. But I'm saving that to the end, so let's get into it. So like I said in my intro video, this entire chapter one has to do with players and all the different customizable options you got. But there's a big difference between a customizing your origin and a custom lineage from scratch. So a custom origin is when you pick any class that already exists in Dungeons and & Dragons, and you take it and you tweak the things that it already has. The three things you can swap around here are the ability scores that they normally would get, any type of proficiency having to do with weapons, armor, skills, anything, and then languages. And I feel like I've been ahead of the game here because I've been doing this since I started. Because it never made sense if I want to make a Dragonborn that's a small, slender Dragonborn that's very stealthy, why does that have a plus two to strength and plus one to charisma? So you can take that plus two and that plus one and assign them anywhere you want, because that just feels right. So again, make sure you stay within your race and whatever modifiers they would get, whether it's a one and a one or a two and a one or whatever, you can swap those around to something else. We'll do languages next here and whatever language that you have besides common, you can switch that up to something else that makes more sense for your backstory. And now this part on proficiencies can get a little confusing, so I've done something to help you guys out with. They give you a chart right here on what you have and what you can replace it with, but I've made one myself. So here's my super fancy chart that I made just for you guys. <laughs> this is what you currently have and any skill that you have, you can replace it with any other skill. Any type of armor or martial weapon that you have, you can switch it out with any martial or simple weapon because you can't just gain armor proficiencies and swap out a sword for wearing heavy armor. Or if you have any simple weapon or tool, you can swap it out with any other simple weapon or tool. This honestly just feels right. And like I said, it's something I've already done for years where if somebody has part of their backstory where they did something else that's just that close, just switch it over. And the last thing they get into here is personality to where of course you can have your personality of whatever stereotypical things having to do with your race be whatever you want. And one more a quick side note here of what I do at my table to keep this custom train rolling is backgrounds and class proficiencies. You get two from your background and two from your class. I let my players pick whatever they want. Why would you box in what a paladin is supposed to be good at or what a barbarian is supposed to be good at and what their background is? I don't make my characters, or my players pick a background. They can do whatever they want. Tell me their background and pick any two, just like with any class. So you basically get four proficiencies. I just say pick four. And let's keep on customizing with some lineages. Custom lineage is completely different than custom origin because you're starting this thing from scratch. You do not have a base race template that you can make changes from. You start with this template and build on it from there. And this system is awesome and it's a small step towards the huge system that I'm gonna be talking about at the end of the video. For this, you pick any race you want, but it's purely based off of just how you look and the mechanics are off of this template. So you could pick a tiefling and then use this template to customize a tiefling. Or you could pick a gnome and use this template to customize a gnome. Or a purple dragonborn, because that's what I do. But you take your creature type and you are a humanoid. You have your sizes you can choose small or medium and your speed you can set to 30. Again, like I said, I would personally pair the size and speed together and small would be 25 feet and medium would be 30 feet. But hey, another thing I would change here just a little bit for a homebrew tweak is an ability score increase. It says one ability score increases by two. I would change that to just have two points and kind of like the human variant, you can put them wherever you want, but as a little bonus twist here, you can also put them in the same thing. Why limit the customization of having to put it into one thing? Let them split it up if they want. You of course also get one feat and you get a variable trait, which again is only limited to dark vision or proficiency in a skill. A little sneak peek now into my system is whenever you choose your race, you have a bunch of racial features that you can choose from and there's over 30 of them. But hey, dark vision and a skill is cool too. And languages is common plus one. And if you couldn't get enough of my next level charts, I made you another one. This is a direct comparison between a variant human on the left and the custom lineage system on the right. As you can see, the ability scores you get the same of. For the custom lineage, you only get two into one, but I say why not split them up? And for humans, you get a one, but you can put it in two places. Humans get a skill proficiency you can put anywhere you want. So does this custom lineage, but they can also choose dark vision. Sorry, humans. They both get a feat. How cool is that? Human size is locked in at medium and same with the movement speed. 
then you, at least for the custom lineage, they can choose medium or small with the 30 feet of movement, and they both get a common language plus one. So as you can see, this is really not that different from a variant human, but I really do like that this is a step in the right direction. I'll finish running with it later. Now we're gonna get into optional class features. I think there's a huge misconception on this that I had myself, and I really didn't understand how that they worked from the uh, Unearthed Arcana compared to this. To explain this, then clarify, I would call these things additional class features. Because assuming that your dungeon master is good with it, you would get all of these things on top of what you normally get. Some of these features do have an optional choice where you choose one or the other, but we'll get into that in just a second. So for this barbarian, at third level, they get primal knowledge. Like all level three barbarians would now get this along with what they'd normally get at level three. Time out. It feels weird doing a timeout here, but my microphone is broken, so I, I kind of have to be here. So many things in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything feel like they're in my head and they pirated it from me. I've always felt sometimes that when my players level up, the things that they get were just a little underwhelming. And if you pay attention to where they put these optional features, a lot of times it's weaved into a part where their class really doesn't get a lot or it could solve an overall problem that the class has. So I could not be more on board than giving additional features to classes and giving more options sometimes to pick between. Back to the Bruin. So I'm gonna give you a side-by-side -side comparison of primal knowledge at third level for the barbarian. As you look at the normal barbarian table, at third level, they would get their primal path feature. They now also get primal knowledge. Primal path, primal knowledge. Did they do that on purpose? Then at seventh level, they get instinctive pounce and they normally would get feral instincts so they would get both. This was the part that confused me the most because if feral instincts have made me feel like you have to choose between instinctive pounce at level seven or feral instincts at level seven, but that's not how it works. You literally get both, an additional class feature. Let's clear up some things here with the cleric. They have optional class features. They have additional spells that they got added to. Harness divine power is a second level feature that they now just get on top of everything else they get. Cantrip versatility, they also get that on top of everything. But here's where the confusing part for me, at least me came in, is eighth level class feature which replaces Divine Strike or Potent Spellcasting. So any cleric gets either Divine Smite or Potent Spellcasting at 8th level. If you choose this, it replaces those things. But you will know that because it says which replaces in the literal line, right? So everything you get is an additional class feature. This one replaces. I was always under the impression that you had to choose one or the other, but this makes a lot more sense now. And this is also really cool for clerics because Divine Strike had to do with their weapon attacks and Potent Spellcasting had to do with their spells, but this lets them be able to do both. So if you want to be able to hit with the weapon and cast spells, Blessed Strike's the way to go. I'm not gonna go through every single additional class feature, but it's just an awesome thing that they're doing for all these different classes to be able to have different stuff that they can do alongside what they already can do. And the last thing here before I take all of this and run with it with my own homebrew system are these 15 different feats in Tasha's Cauldron. And keep this in mind here in a second, but this is a feat that can let you feel a little bit more like an artificer without having to fully multi-class into one. Now I'm not gonna go through all these feats, but what I want you to look at all these feats about, and this is a true for feats in general, is some feats have this little bonus to strength or constitution you get an ability score modifier along with something else that's smaller. But the bigger feats that are a lot more powerful don't have that little extra in there. And that's in general the structure of feats that if you have a medium level feat, they usually tack on that plus one to an extra thing. But if you have the full one, all you get is the feat. Or of course, you could always pick to not take a feat and take that normal ability score improvements. Here's another good example of a feat that gives you a little ability score improvement and the access to be able to cast a spell of some kind on a long rest cooldown. And here's yet another feat that lets you feel like another class without having to multi-class into one, fighting initiate it lets you take a fighting style option. And it even lets you swap it out with different ability score improvements like we've already talked about before. My favorite three feats here are Piercer, Slasher, and Crusher. I don't know why they didn't call it Bludgeoner. Those three feats sync up with me, but in a different way. I have an entire weapon system that I'm working on that I've changed all the different weapons around and I handle it through different weapon types instead of through feats. And the telekinetic and Telepathic feats are pretty cool too. All right, so what is this homebrew feat system that I've been hyping up? I've only been hyping it up because I truly feel like this is an absolute game changer. We have just talked about creating a character at level one from scratch then whenever they level up they get cool new stuff and then they also have feet options i am tying all of that into one system with the system that i haven't officially named yet you are able to customize your character from scratch based off of a list of a ton of customizable options, very similar to the custom limited system. And then once you have your character, every single level up, if your DM allows it, they can give you points to be able to get more stuff. And then an ability to score improvements, you could also tap into this pool of customizable options. So here's what I'm done, and you can only imagine how long something like this takes. I've taken every single feat in the game, every single racial option in the game based off of all the different homebrew stuff, rules as written, and off the charts. I took all of those things and broke them apart into smaller pieces and assigned a point value to them for balance purposes. So an ability score increase, that's worth one point. A skill proficiency, that's worth one point. Expertise in a proficiency you already have, 
worth one point. Or what if you're creating your character from scratch and you want to create a creature that has horns and can do some sort of charge attack with them. When you're creating your character, the DM gives out a certain amount of points to all the players and he can give as much or as little points as they want. Powerful characters versus weaker starting characters. So if you want to add horns to your character for a 1d6 headbutt attack that you can use, sure, that's one point. If you want to take it a step farther and be able to have some sort of charge attack along with that, that's another point. And we talked about Dark Vision earlier and depending on how strictly you run at your tables, for me, I think Dark Vision would be worth two points, but I have a weaker version of Dark Vision worth one point and a more advanced version of Dark Vision, Super Dark Vision, worth three points. And moving away from any type of bestial or racial type features, you can do this with any sort of humanoid too with a greater weapon mass. That would be worth three points. You can get that right off the bat. You can also choose what your starting speed is at for 25 points at the default. 30 would be plus one point and 35 would be two points. But don't get crazy. There's limits on each of these things where you can't just pour points into one thing and then you have a movement speed of 40. I got the whole system flushed out. And we just talked about bonus level up perks and you can use these as well. Whenever you're a DM, if you don't want to have to rack your brain and creatively come up with something every single time your players level up, you can give them a point and they can either hold on to it and save it up for later for something bigger they want or spend it right away. And when your players get ability score improvements, I've based the entire system around getting three points would be worth one feat. And let me bring this back into the mix, but here's an example of a crusher feat where the first thing on there increases your strength of constitution, that's worth one point. The second thing on there, that's worth another point. And the third thing on there is worth another point. That's just the basics of how I created the balance around this structure to where it works out pretty nicely. And if you disagree with me on any of the point values, you can always change them yourself. So this is something that I've been working on for literally two years. And with Tasha's cauldron of everything coming out, it really spurred me into action to finish this thing up so I could sync it up with this video. Because I really do feel like it's so similarly in line with what their intention was. Hopefully I've sparked some ideas so that you can do this for yourself. And if you like this system, you can take it and run with it too. But if you want all of that work done for you and you just want to be handed this entire system that I'm also going to be adding on to over these few months, Months, I'm giving it all to my patrons. Every patron of the Wormling tier and higher will get access to this entire document with over 200 different feed options. It's probably closer to 300. I tried putting stuff like this on the DMs Guild last time and it really didn't work out. So I really want to thank the people that helped me the most and support literally what I'm able to do here with this document. This thing has honestly had over 100 hours of work put into it and I really, really love it. So I wanted to give it to you guys. And I'm going to keep adding on different feats and more custom options for multi-classing, mounted combat, and a lot more with all these new PDFs that'll be coming out with every month. But hey, if this video blows up and you guys really like it, then I could do a whole nother video and expand on this a little bit more. Stay tuned because in a few days, volume two comes out where I'm going over group patrons. So until then, stay creative and think outside that box. Peace.